And Lely Hayslip is with us now. Welcome, we appreciate you being here. Well, and we're also pleased to be joined by Mark Conroy, who is from Beekman Town. And you have spent the past 20 some years in Vietnam working for one of the foundations that right. Lately founded. Mm -hmm. And you're just recently back home now here in the North Country. That's right. Lately, along with the event at SUNY Plattsburgh, you also gave a talk to students in Beekman Town, and you were on hand for a screening of Oscar-winning director Oliver Stone's 1993 film, Heaven and Earth, uh, which played at this year's Lake Champlain Film Festival, which is based on your memoirs. Yes. And your story of survival and your quest really to heal the wounds of war. Yes. How did you and Oliver Stone meet, and what was it about your story and your, your memoirs that he thought would make a good film? Well, you know, he uh, also produced his own story on platoon. That a young man went to Vietnam, um, wanted to fight for his country, uh, help Vietnamese people, and he saw what he saw there, and did what he did there. Uh, then, after that, he made a film on uh, Run COVID, on Born 4th of July. This was the third film in his trilogy yeah, right. on Vietnam. And were you happy with the film? Were you happy how he portrayed your books? Yes, based on the b both books, first and second books, so it, everything there um, true from the book. You were just a young teenager during the war, or the American conflict, as, as people in Vietnam called it. You were captured, you were tortured by South Vietnamese soldiers in the Viet Cong. You eventually married an American and ended up in the United States. Yes. When you first got to the U.S., the war was still going on. Yes. How difficult was that? living in America as, as a Vietnamese? It's very difficult. And everybody looking at me that, oh, it's your fault. We're, you should not you kill our people. And you know we're there to help Vietnamese. And I don't turn up, it's uh, killed by you people. It's a shame on you. And here I'm 20 years old, mother of two, landed in San Diego without knowing what I'm getting myself into. Was it about the time that the book came out, or was it shortly before the book came out that you went back to, to Vietnam, that you, after a number of years of living in the United States, in the San Diego area, went back uh, in particular to visit your family and, and your mother? I went back to Vietnam to visit my family after 16 years here in the United States. And that is when I come back from Vietnam. I saw what I saw there. It was a shocking sea after the war and embargoes. Uh, by United States governments, again Vietnam, and put Vietnam way down the bottom, uh, hell, and people starving. Um, I just could not continue and have a good life and live in California, so I decided to uh, make a change, and a change to sell my restaurant and houses and just put together that my life story. But not only my life story, my family, my villages, and the country, what we went through, and point out who is Vietnamese, who is Viet Cong, who is a communist, and we have to bring that all together, and how to find a way to give a voice for the voiceless, and give a name to nameless, and give a face for the face, for the Vietnamese faceless for so many years. So my book is the first voice on a Vietnamese, and uh, first Vietnamese point of view on the Viet Cong side, and then uh, put Vietnam on a map after the movie came out. As your memoir came out, and, and also the film, was that at about the same time that you started your first foundation, that you started doing the humanitarian work in, in Vietnam? Yeah, the uh, book came out in 1989, and after I, re I came back here to the U.S., uh, first thing first, I start to write books. Second, when a double day um, willing to publish my book, that's when I found the Ichmiquet Foundation in 1988. And Mark, that's where you come in. You were hired, you were living here in Plattsburgh, and you connected with Lei Lee to work for, for that foundation. I did. I was a Peace Corps volunteer for the two years before that, 92 to 94. And she wanted a Peace Corps volunteer type person to head up her efforts there in, uh, in central Vietnam. And what sort of work did you do for the foundation there? Oh, we did uh, many kinds of work. We did fundraising, first of all, because we needed to have money to do program work with. 
But I went there mainly to uh, manage an orphanage and a primary health care center. Those were the two main jobs. And also we worked in the countryside uh, doing uh, uh, loans, revolving loan program. We were doing some village wells, some homes. And your foundations so, were really aimed at the rural parts of Vietnam. Right. And you literally helped them rebuild, building schools, clinics, Hospital. Hospitals, libraries, markets. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you, you truly made a profound, had a profound impact on, on the lives of, of millions of people. I came from there. I'm one of them. I know what they went through. I know what their needs. And what American did over there. And now give the American a chance to go back. Someone like Mark and his brothers come back and help. And eventually in 1994, the embargo was lifted. Right. 1994, the embargo was lifted. 1996, when the United States and Vietnam formally for diplomats. But your work wasn't done. Your foundation has oh. continued to this day to help well, people I'm, in need. I'm over 65 now. We both are, and uh, we three need to retire and spend time with the uh, grandchildren. And uh, I also uh, had breast cancer myself, and so I just need time to healing. And um, so I cut down my work a lot over there. And Mark, I think he finished, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but you want Never the finished. you want the work to continue. You want your found foundation to continue to work in Vietnam. Is there still more work to do? With Global Village Foundation, yes. But uh, it's big wet. It is um, it, the name is changed. The people change. Everything changed. So I'm not longer involved. Uh, with the East Midwest, but uh, I'm with Global Village Foundation, yes, and we still support the uh, children's hospital and orphanages there. They're still doing good work, great yes. work. Thank you. And for you, the whole experience of, of creating both of those foundations has been healing and uplifting for you? Yes. Um, I mean, I was poor growing up. Nothing has changed. Uh, I, when I was 10 years old, I went to school, um, like little huts, uh, dirt floor, uh, little chair and table, it's still the same. And so how could I turn my back and walk away? And so to help, I couldn't do it alone. I could not do it alone. We had um, many other, because of the book and movie, people understand more. Someone like Mark that say, yeah, you know, I can keep my time. He's supposed to go for one year, volunteer. He end up for 23 years. Mm -hmm. And so because the country it needed help, and we little more, we spent the whole country, not even north, south, or central, but we did many, many different programs and projects. And so uplifting me, yes, uh, healing me inside out a lot, keep me young, busy. Uh, 724 kind of work, but hey, work for humanity. That is what I'm here to do, and we always come here to do, for humanity. There must be a reason you stayed 23 years. Oh, sure, yeah, it was, it was a challenging time, especially the early years in Vietnam. Very challenging, just working with and through the government, and uh, it was a different government than what we're used to here, of course. and. Uh, it took a, lot, a long time really to build trust. So that's why one year really, really wasn't going to be enough. Because I saw that happening with other NGOs who would be in the country for one or two years and they never really saw the fruits of their endeavor, you know. So they didn't know if their programs were good or bad or if they were successful or not. So and you got to I, see stayed, I stayed to make sure they were. 16 general hospital and how many university and colleges? Oh, we did a lot of, I think about six or seven university schemes, mostly uh, dormitory centers or food centers or sports. And we did a lot in education. In the villages, we built about 300 and 350 schools, I believe. Much has been made this fall of Ken Burns' documentary on the Vietnam War. Yes. He in the months leading up to it talked about how they traveled several times to, Viet, uh, to Vietnam to get their perspective, to get the perspective of families yes. like yours and, and soldiers that, that's that been lacking uh, for so many years. Have you had a chance to see his documentary and what are your thoughts? 
Yes, I saw up to seven episodes. And not only him, but Oliver Stone also have ten part of the untold history of the American. Right, a ten part documentary as well, Oliver yes. Stone, yes. I put those two men to put together and on the hour that they're working on it, I'm very pleased to see that at least they give a Vietnamese again a voice and a face. There are many, many books and many point of view, but mostly from the American point of view, not too many Vietnamese. And I wish he can do more in Vietnamese. There are many Vietnamese that have never can have a voice. So there are much more to do. And I'm glad that he did it 18 hours, but he can do 28 hours. He still have a lot more to say.